We know exactly how to bring about a fundamental shift in human behaviour and you've hopefully understood, helped by the last film, that precise knowledge is required. Truisms and good intentions will get you nowhere. We've proved our expertise over many years. Our no-nonsense practical process has been rigorously tested for several decades. It works. The psychology of non-selfishness that we're pointing towards will one day, at some point in the future, become the new normal. Billions of humans are well and truly trapped in the bubble of selfishness right now, with the avoidance syndrome making significant change extremely difficult to achieve. We've called this task of mass change almost impossible because of the long history of failure. Nevertheless, a breakthrough will begin to gather pace, sooner or later. The necessity for role models is an essential part of this evolutionary advancement. The actual achievability of a fundamentally different psychology must be clearly demonstrated. There's a limited but nevertheless profound illustration of what we mean by this, but we have to go back to the 1950s. The clue to this pertinent example is on my desk, these running shoes. The experts all said that no human being would ever run a mile in under four minutes. Then, on the 6th of May 1954, Roger Bannister did the impossible. John Landy, an Australian, had previously failed a number of serious attempts, which made him doubt that anyone would run fast enough in the next 10 years. Yet just 46 days after Roger Bannister's famous success, John Landy ran even quicker to set a new world record. Dozens of other runners also ran under four minutes for the mile in the first year after Roger Bannister had demonstrated it was achievable. Many more did so the following year, and the world record was broken again and again. The perception of what is impossible and achievable was pivotal. After the initial breakthrough, the floodgates opened. To be crystal clear, this leap forwards was a psychological one, even though running the mile was a physical event requiring outstanding physical exertion. It was the mental barriers which needed to be overcome, every bit as much as the need to beat the clock. So, many years ago, to summarise this need for role models, we coined the term the Roger Bannister effect. We're back to monkey do what monkey see, which I'm always going on about, only this time is an example of good social conditioning. People need role models to show them the way, to demonstrate what's possible, as in actual achievement. You influence others. There's an impact. It might be positive, negative or indifferent, minor or major, but it happens. What you do can inspire or reinforce, hinder or detract, or merely provide further reason for becoming comfortably numb. You produce ripples. It's a two-way effect. Others affect you, and you affect them. This should be a sobering thought, if you let it sink in. A wake-up call. It immediately suggests responsibility, that somehow your actions matter, including your inaction. It puts you in the frame on the spot. There's no getting away with it. The world is in a pickle. We humans are messing it up and hurting one another in countless ways. Suffering is accepted as normal, yet we'd never accept our phones going wrong all the time. So something needs to happen. We need change. Role models are required. No, not more dodgy celebrities. Definitely not. Ones with integrity. We have to raise the bar by quite a lot. If selfishness is basically dysfunctional, problematic, it needs to be replaced with a better way. Expectations must be appropriately high. If your name's Roger, great. If not, that's also fine. Either way, you need to step up and be counted. 
you do anyway in terms of influence, ripples. So you might as well do it properly, thoughtfully, with clear intent and deep purpose. There's no sitting on the fence, even if you're the most lazy and apathetic person to have ever existed. You're either part of the problem or else part of a solution. There's no hiding from this fact, regardless of all that comfort food in the fridge and booze in the drinks cabinet. Consequences exist. They happen. We've done the initial hard work. The exact know-how has been identified and extensively tested. And we've done our absolute best to explain what we know as simply as possible within a subject area that's supposed to be ineffable. It has been polluted by more gunk than you find in the average cesspool. It's an educational process, albeit involving unlearning as well as learning, but one like no other. We've been ever mindful that individual role models have to shift a fair way from selfishness to non-selfishness to reach any benchmark that could be called worthy. Early on, we struggled. A good amount of change happened, but usually not quite enough. Avoidance is a really tough nut to crack, with layers and layers of defensiveness to work through. Anything less than an 80% shift simply isn't enough when it comes to being a role model. This scale is based on 0% as being the normal self-orientated psychology, which encompasses so-called good and so-called bad behaviour and everything in between. 100% represents a complete shift, the true start of non-selfishness. And yes, change can be reliably measured or evaluated, like anything else, once you start thinking mechanically. It's not just a matter of helping individuals to learn and go beyond their current limitations. We go much further than this. It's a step-by-step -step process of eliminating degrees of contradiction and hypocrisy of putting one for all, all for one into practice, weakening the grip of me first. This involves developing a high degree of self-honesty, facing all aspects of reality. We're now succeeding in getting a few individuals to and beyond the demanding 80% plus benchmark. And we have reason to think this partial breakthrough will continue to happen. With additional role models, the process should gradually quicken. Indeed, one day change will happen so easily that the early decades of struggle will be hard to comprehend or remember. The aim is to create new benchmarks and to eventually normalise them. But at the moment, it looks like a daunting challenge if you're a beginner battling against the barrage of avoidance. At first, you barely realise what you're up against in terms of overcoming shitty past conditioning. Avoidance has shielded you from the ugliness. Generally, progress mostly occurs as little improvements, building on a pre-existing structure. In our case, the task is to simultaneously dismantle one framework whilst building a replacement. It's nothing less than a shift of paradigms. This, in itself, is different to normal change. It's far more complicated and demanding. You often hear the phrase open-minded but this is actually a rare event. Almost all of the time, there's closed-mindedness or narrow-mindedness. When there is receptiveness, the normal response is to attempt to bolt any new idea or learning onto existing ways of thinking. At best, you see minor adjustments. But what we're talking about is fundamental change, as you know. The response we're describing should be as dramatic as it was when others ran as quick or quicker than Roger Bannister after he'd led the way. But those athletes had an advantage. They were already keen competitors, primed for peak performance. And the barrier of impossibility was comparatively small, pertaining to one tiny part of life. So, if you're hearing me, really understanding my words, it's time to step up big time. This is a call to arms. Role models are needed to demonstrate what is absolutely achievable. Push for increased levels of courage, as in the spirit of an adventurer. Pioneers aren't born, they develop through huge amounts of ongoing effort. 
Ask those pertinent questions, inquiring, challenging, probing. Once you're beyond the first barriers of complacency, keep going. Think big. And that reference to keep going nicely leads us to the topic of our next film, Continual Improvement and Error-Focused Learning. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.